My name is Dr. Nick Beagley. I'm the research leader, Land Human Systems at DST Group. And I'm Lieutenant Colonel Corey Shillaby from Army Headquarters, and I lead Army's Human Performance Modernisation Initiatives. Now we're pleased to announce the formation of the Human Performance Research Network. This is a defence initiative to increase the investment in human performance research for the warfighter. The soldiers are core to Army's capability. It's our warfighters' creativity and adaptability which will ensure we win on the battlefield of the future. They are our most valuable assets. Now DST Group have quite a mature uh, research program that's looking to enhance human performance and now we're seeking to invest further on these research initiatives, particularly through the investment of HIPPANET. Now we recognise that there's a wealth of capability across uh, the Australian universities um, and we're looking through HIPPANET to, uh, to partner with the best of these research teams. Now we uh, consider the human in terms of the body, of the mind and the tools. So if you just think um, in terms of the physical performance of, of uh, people, um, we're all very used to athletic performance boundaries being pushed continually by science and technology and we want to do the same thing for the warfighter. There are many opportunities through selection, through training and through sustainment where we can enhance the physical performance of the warfighter. But the cognitive uh, preparation and performance of our people is I think where we're going to have the edge and we need to understand more in this space. We need to protect our people from those combat stresses that they'll be exposed to. And also we need to improve their performance uh, to ultimately ensure that the decisions they are making are the most effective ones. But of course none of the uh, physical or cognitive performance um, really takes place without the support of their equipment. So the, the tools that they have for their trade um, are a vital aspect of total military system performance. Um, and we need to apply the best science we can to the design and the integration of these tools so that they're truly fit for purpose. The operational life cycle underpins Army's capability. First, we need to prepare our people for operations. Then we need to ensure that their performance is enhanced whilst on operations. But then most importantly, we need to ensure uh, that our people recover appropriately to either transition into civilian life or probably more, of more value to us is to ensure we can use them on subsequent operations. So when you overlay this understanding of the life cycle with the understanding of the human as this combination of the physical, the mental and also the tools that they use, that gives you a way of really focusing in on where the opportunities and gaps are in Army capability um, and that has led to the, uh, the specification of their priorities. Army's done a lot of work in terms of identifying the research questions uh, that we want tackled. We prioritise those questions, specifically in how we can cognitively and physically prepare our people prior to operations. And also we've prioritised and established a series of questions of how we can enhance their performance through either cognitive or physical augmentation. We have a number of questions allocated to the recovery aspect of the operational life cycle, uh, but for now, uh, those questions will be outside the scope of HIPPANET. So we're really excited to be able to uh, put out this call for expressions of interest um, and we're looking for studies that will meaningfully impact on the uh, priorities identified by Army. So at this point we're looking for two page summaries that um, really um, give us an understanding of how the study is relevant to Army's priorities the degree to which it's necessary that defence is the investor to make this study happen and, and that the team brought together is truly excellent in the delivery of science. Um, we're looking for you know, true partnership for which we mean a degree of co-investment um, in the activity and also a, a willingness and an openness to be connected with the other studies that are brought together through this process. So Army have identified um, $4 million that uh, it's prepared to invest in the first instance um, to, to make this happen over four years. Um, so uh, that translates to roughly six or seven studies. So we anticipate um, a fair number of these, uh, these study proposals. Um, once we receive them, we will evaluate them against those features I mentioned earlier. And we will look to um, down select to a, a, a set um, that we will then engage with those um, uh, universities who, who, who demonstrate the most promising studies to further understand the details of what um, is uh, involved in the study um, and uh, come up with a final selection of the preferred studies. 
So once the best studies have been selected, the true value of the network will be shown. We'll collaborate amongst us through both uh, formal and informal means, and over time mature uh, the partnership where we ha can have a dedicated human performance research network uh, aimed at protecting and improving the performance uh, of our warfighters. Importantly, this is an initial investment by Army. If we, the value of this network can be shown early, then the potential is there for further investment uh, from, from defence resources. An important thing to take away from this is that this isn't just uh, an investment of money from defence. Um, there is a true commitment here to invest um, both the effort and the expertise of defence personnel to make this thing truly a success. We have scientific expertise across the uh, key disciplines um, that we're looking to partner um, for the human performance domain. Um, we have um, a full-time engagement manager uh, providing that, uh, that support to in ensure healthy connection. But probably the most important thing that we have with this is that um, within defence we're looking to allocate scientists um, with the correct disciplines um, as actual collaborators on each of the studies that are finally selected. This is an important initiative that defence is undertaking. The soldiers are at the core of our capability. We must do everything we can to ensure that they can outperform our adversaries in the future and protect, from, protect them from the combat stresses that they'll be exposed to. We look forward to receiving your innovative proposals and are excited to work with you in collaboration as a mature network over the coming years.